Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So on this channel, I like to cover anything related to RF, and that includes easy to use handheld radios like the one I'm about to show you. Now this is called the CD-108D, manufactured by a company called Chiurda, or at least that's how I think it's pronounced, but this video is about the radio and not how I pronounce its name. In the box, we have a small user's manual, which by all accounts seems to be written in English quite well. Also included is a desktop mains charger. So yep, yeah, you'll need to plug this into the wall to charge the battery. A standard belt clip is also provided, which attaches to the radio itself and not the battery that we've seen on other radios like this. Now the included antenna supports a frequency range of between 400 to 480 megahertz, and it's quite rigid. It doesn't really have that much wobble. Of course, you can use your own antenna as the radio connection is the popular SMA style. A little lanyard or wrist strap is also found in the box, which can be quite handy depending on your use case. Now the radio itself feels extremely solid, it has a good, decent amount of weight and doesn't really feel particularly cheap. The front facing speaker and microphone seem pretty well protected with the hard plastic shell and the lower half of the front panel holds a secret, which we'll look at in a moment. Now, according to the specification, this radio has an IP65 rating, which means it's dust tight and it has a protection from water jets from any direction. On the left side of the radio, we have the main PTT button, followed by two programmable function buttons below. Now, a single tap on the function buttons change the channel in which the radio is tuned to, and there's 16 of those. With a long press on those buttons, the lower one turns on or off the top LED torch, and the middle button activates a lock feature. However, I changed mine to open the squelch when long pressed, which I'll show you how to do in the software shortly. Now on the right side of the radio, we have a speaker mic socket, which like many other radios like this, can also be used to program the radio with a suitable programming cable. You may notice here that there's no rubber flap, but it does have a solid plastic flap, which is held in place with a screw. Now clearly I've removed it for this part of the video. On the top of the radio, we have the antenna connection, a rotary on and off, which also acts as a volume control. And then we have the white torch LED, which is sunk into the casing of the radio. There's also a status LED on the top, which glows red when transmitting and green when receiving. The battery is easily removable. And once removed, this exposes the metal chassis of the radio, along with a serial number sticker, which apparently shows an FCC ID. Now we'll check out those spurious emissions in a moment. Well, strangely, the manual states that this radio is 10 watts, but the serial sticker shows five watts or less, which in my opinion is a lot more believable. The rechargeable battery states that it has a capacity of 2,500 milliamp hour, which is 300 milliamp hour lower than what the specification sheet actually says. The battery is actually quite thick though, and has a good weight to it, so maybe the capacity spec is correct. Who knows? Now turning on the CD-108D reveals that this radio has a display concealed in the lower half of the front of the radio. Not only does this display show channel number, it also shows battery level, signal strength, transmit strength, and whether or not the channel has any CTSS or DCSS settings applied. Another little trick up its sleeve is that the logo at the top of the front panel will illuminate red when transmitting, and then when receiving, it glows green. Now, as mentioned before, this radio has a little torch on the top, which doesn't appear to be super bright, but it may be useful in some scenarios. Now, the software to program these radios is available to download for free from the Chiyoda website. Now, this allows you to configure each of the available 16 channels and that includes separate transmit and receive frequencies, the CTSS tone for encoding or decoding, the modulation, whether it's wide or narrow, and of course the power level, whether it's low or high. There are some other settings there which probably won't be used in ham radio, like frequency hopping or encryption. 
but may be useful to those of you that want to use this radio in the commercial market. This is the uh, Chai Erda CD108D uh, testing on 70 centimetres uh, wide audio. This is uh, M0DQW testing uh, the Chai Erda CD 108D, over. If we hook the radio up to a power meter, which has a dummy load attached to the output, we see an output power of 4 watts, and that's with the radio set to low power. Transmit frequency is around 434 megahertz. Now if I change to channel 1, which I pre-programmed to output high power, we see an output power of just over 8 watts, so a considerable difference from that low power setting. With the radio set to low power and with some attenuators in line, we can see a 5.5 dBm fundamental. Further up the band, at the second harmonic, we measure a signal of minus 45. So that's an acceptable level for a second harmonic. So that's the Chioda CD108D. Now this is the UHF version, but they also manufacture a VHF version. So whichever band you want to use, they cater for that. Now I guess this type of radio would be quite useful for things like organised events or if you want to deploy a set of handheld radios and limit functionality to the users. Of course you can buy dual band handheld radios for around the same price as this radio but it's all about the build quality and the user's requirements. Anyway guys, until the next video, take care and I'll see you in the next one.